You've been in the, the sun? Haven't saw you around in a while. I'm just embarrassed to be here. <laughs> What's the key to this win? Uh, I think obviously when you get a, a good start and you get something to build on, you know, uh, that really was uh, our mandate. You know, there's a lot of talk of pressure and must win and all those things. And what we tried to do is just focus on getting our skating game going, get our cycle game going, getting, you know, the puck moved effectively out of our zone. And, uh, you know, we were able to accomplish that for the, probably the better part of the first two periods. And then we had our typical little lull in the hockey game. And, uh, but enough, that was enough tonight, you know. So hopefully it's a, a point for us that we can feel good about ourselves and build some confidence because that's the way I'm looking at it. It's just a starting point for our group. And there, we need to uh, build on, on the success of the win here and carry that over into the next one, the next one, the next one, because all these games are going to come quick here. Randy, compared to some of the teams you've been with before, how do you think the guys handled the last few games? Um, as far as you know, were you getting nervous if you were getting a little? Yeah, nervous? I think it's, the, the nervousness shows in, in when, when we stop skating. It's 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 so simple, but yet it's so hard, because if you watch the video, we're just standing still trying to make plays, and for our group or for any group, if you play the game standing still, you're going to run into problems. And those are the times and the, the consecutive minutes or the consecutive shifts that we ha have this malaise that we're not moving our feet and we're not, and then the puck, all of a sudden the puck rolls off the end of your stick and we don't get it out at the line. And then, then it just seems to grow. Uh, but I don't think it grew to the level tonight that it has in the past. So hopefully that's a sign that we can turn the page on it. And that part of that is confidence too. Like, Jake Gardner at all, um... Um, add to that skating part that you wanted to see? I think he was very visible in the game. I think Jake uh, did some real good things. Uh, you, you noticed him up on the rush and you noticed him skating the puck and I think there still is some of the things that we'd like to do uh, aren't ingrained in him yet from uh, our typical system. Just for example, control breakout. He went in the wrong corner. But in the Marlies maybe goes in the other corner. You know, that's, a, that's the difference. It's the same breakout, but it's just that his responsibility for our hockey club goes in another corner than what he went into. So you notice those little things, and you know you notice that he can can really lug the puck. And the, the little uh, two-on-two -two game that he had going with John Michael Lyles, I think at the end of the first period, was not something that coaches are are going to be real excited about. It might be a good entertainment value, but to see both your defensemen twirling up at the top and nobody back, it kind of Sends a little bit of a shiver. They, maybe they shouldn't do that. And they skated and skated and didn't really get a shot on it or accomplish anything. And uh, that's those are the kind of things that you notice that they have skills. He has a tremendous skill set. I'm not sure if you had a chance to see the video, but do you think Lupul's hit on Hedman might uh, drive? I, I, I was surprised. I haven't heard it. I, I haven't saw that yet. No, I I was surprised. I didn't see the play, actually, what had happened. And... and, and Somebody said something about the loophole hit, and I haven't had a chance to review it. What was the thinking in getting the cadre against the Stamkos line? Uh, I think the the one thing that um, we are going to do is we're going to test cadre against the best players. He wants that. He cherishes it, and tonight it worked for him. And I think with the, the return of loophole, and uh, we, we put Coolum in there to try to offer that big body and that safety valve for the two of them. So we're going to stay with that for a while as long as they continue to provide a level of offense and are decent defensively. It it would be nice to be able to, to have, you know, three lines of offense going. Randy, does it surprise you at all that Kadri's grasping the defensive responsibilities as well as he has to this point? Well, I don't think he, he was ever shy in that area or was negligent in that area. I think the biggest emergence of Nazem Kadri is where and when in the game to try then use the skill moves. He was always good defensively. When he played in the American Hockey League and he played junior hockey, he was always a guy that you could count on being strong down low. He was a guy that knew the position and played the position and wasn't foreign to being low in, a, in the defensive zone. I think what 
the pros do and what happens in your transition from junior to, to pro hockey, it's the number of times that you expose yourself to the high, high risk, high reward and where you do it and when you do it on the ice. And that's really been the learning curve for Nazi because we always knew that he had skill. What did you do this year then, Randy, to bring that out of him? I just told him that there's certain places on the ice and there's certain times that you can, you're can you going to be afforded the opportunity to do those things. But if it's the last minute or if it's, you know, in the, in the neutral ice and you're one on four, it doesn't make any sense to do it. It's just common sense from a, from a coach's perspective. But from a player's perspective, they see it differently at times. Tell you what a young guy like Kadri that on a day that – Personally, could have been very difficult for him. He went out and played the way he did and contributed the way he did. Uh, and it shows you the fire and the competitiveness that he has inside of him. You know, and and that's really what everybody has learned from from being around the kid is is that you can go up one side of him, down the other, on his deficiencies, but in the end, he's going to go back out there and prove you wrong. And that's a special skill. Naz, he's got that. He doesn't. He does, he lets that stuff float out like water off a duck's back, and he's going to go out and I'll show you that I can do it. And he does it in his own way. You got to give the kid credit. A couple of more, Randy. If you're going to allow sort of test him, as, as you say, are you prepared to be patient with him if it's? I think I've shown a lot of patience with. I think as a coaching staff, we have done that already. So. I think this is just another step in the maturing of a young hockey player. And I'm sure there's going to be some speed bumps along the way, and he's going to turn the puck over when we don't want him to. But, you know, I, I don't know. Did he have three assists tonight or three points? And, you know, he's a catalyst in, in creating offense. And there are a lot, of good, the, the, a lot of good things. The good things outweigh the poor things or the poor judgments that he's making by 10 to 2 or, you know, so... You can't harbor or can't, I think, don't think you should ever stifle. Okay.